Hi guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. As we visit a unit that I don't think I have ever played before. The Dagger Axe Lancers, or Elite Daggers, if they're leveled up. Um, yeah, I've never played this unit. I've had them unlocked for years, and people have definitely requested them over the years. I've just always never really thought they were worth visiting, and just couldn't really be asked to play them. But a few changes to them fairly recently, and actually, they now play really quite nicely, and I've actually been having a lot of fun with them. So let's kind of break down a little bit about what the unit is, and actually why it is a unit that is seriously worth possibly unlocking and using, because it's actually pretty, pretty good. So, veterancy lines. There's two lines available. Um, I'm currently going down the top line, mostly for things like the charge cooldown and stuff like that. Increased damage to infantry, reduced range damage, etc. Range damage when charging means they can kind of get in and charge fairly effectively. Although it is worth noting they don't get stun resistance when charging, like, say, like a Hazar unit. So if you start to get hit by javelins, uh, crossbows or muskets, then it will cause stun. So you have got to bear that in mind. They get a few nice things about them. One is formations. They get a really nice wedge formation. Any cavalry unit that comes with a wedge is always going to be that little bit easier to play, and that is definitely true in this case. They perform really nicely. And then they essentially have two abilities. They have a standard charge, same as any other cavalry charge, really. Pretty decent, because it's good... Ugh, God, I can't even speak at all today. This is like the second video I'm trying to record, and this is about the fourth take of doing this one. But <laughs> they do have a standard charge. Acts pretty much like any other cavalry unit. Long distance, good damage going to hit you know sort of four or five k against most units particularly if you charge from behind will kill stuff quite effectively combined with some of the cooldowns we get from the um, doctrines and the veterancy line put it on a fairly short cooldown and then we get a rally to me ability where the unit is supposed to charge directly to the commander now in my experience rally to me doesn't really act very much like a rally to me it, 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 I mean, it sort of does, but cavalry have got such long turning circles and are so sort of clunky, it just doesn't really work like that. But it's what tends to happen in my experience is when you activate Rally to Me, they turn and then they do like a swing with their sort of half pole axes and half lancers, I guess. And then they do like a swing and it almost acts much more like a Lao's bludgeon than it does a Rally to Me ability. So, so I like to charge in, get a good number of kills, get the units stuck into the enemy units stop the unit, activate the rally to me, that basically puts them onto like a bludgeon, really effective against enemy heroes as well, and then, you know, you can just manually then X and pull the unit out of the fight if you're trying to escape. I find that tends to work pretty nicely. Um, they don't have amazing defensive stats, 450 piercing slashing, pretty standard, 10,000 hit points, 18 model units, 240 leadership, all pretty bog standard stuff. Obviously, they're probably doing piercing on the charge and then slashing on the sort of arcing swing thing that they do. Very quickly then, in terms of doctrines, I actually got a couple of pretty decent ones. I got a um, top tier, tier 5 one, which not only reduces my charge cooldown, but gives that 50% damage reduction when charging. And that's, of course, also applying to, uh, on top of the range damage reduction you get with this unit when charging as well, through the, through the veterancy line. So... If you're coming up against archers and stuff, you actually take a pretty minimal amount of damage as you charge into them. We then also got a tier 5 lance charge doctrine, which shows 14 seconds of charge cooldown, which is really intense. You can see why this is such a handy doctrine to have, as well as a little bit of piercing damage, a little bit of extra charge damage, a flat charge damage, a little bit of a breakthrough doctrine, and of course a little bit of extra movement speed, because who doesn't like to go slightly faster? The final thing we'll quickly just go and show you, of course, this is a tech tree unit, which feels really rare to actually be reviewing a tech tree unit that doesn't happen very often. So they do have uh, veterancy nodes, including things like piercing defense, slashing damage, etc., a bit of extra health. So it is well worth unlocking these if, like me, you end up with loads of spare on it because you've pretty much got everything unlocked anyway. So, yeah, there we go. Let's hop into some battles with them, see what we can do, and see what we can run over with our dagger axes. So, kick things off with a little bit of Hidden City. Uh, already lost the A point, did a little bit of defending with some Fortabrachios, and I'm just thinking about doing a bit of a flanking um, as they push down off the wall. Is what I'm doing here is I was essentially watching them, waiting for them to push forwards from the stairs. I want to flank, 
and I want them to have already moved into the alleyway, if that makes sense, so that I can get round behind without being shotted. Rather unhelpfully, that short bow shoots me off my horse. Damn you. But we still get round. The guy doesn't notice me, and that gives me a clean run around the back. I'm ignoring the javelins because I want to get round, charge at close range, and we get straight into the back. I then go on with my return to commander, and you can see we start picking up kills really quite quickly. Got the first, second hero kill. Um, I don't even know how many unit kills we've got, sort of 40 or 50 unit kills, and then I'm pulling the unit out. A lot of the unit is damaged, but we actually get out with only, what, four, four losses? Which isn't bad, considering how much stuff we managed to kill. Now, of course, arguably, a lot of cavalry would do well when you get a nice rear charge in that sort of situation, but it's the sort of follow-up return to commander damage that you get that really kind of makes it nice. I mean, pretty well, without overstating my importance, completely wiped that push as they were trying to push on that supply point. We've got a couple of heroes and loads of units. It's like a graveyard down here from the amount of stuff that we killed. It really does work quite nicely. I mean, uh, poor lockdown, the poor little Nadachi there as well. <laughs> anyway, we have still got quite a good chunk of unit left alive. So, I've sent the dagger axes back to the supply point. They are now all healed up, and we've kind of got to decide what we want to do next. I was curious what this guy on the minimap had got down here, and he'd got some palace guards. Okay, I'm interested. He turns um, into the main base point, but I do not want to fight him on a narrow staircase like that. It's just going to be a complicated and a bad place for us to go. We see him what looks like going out and around this doorway here. So I think, right, let's give him a pass. He obviously turned to avoid me. Let's intercept him. Well, he's not at the doorway that I thought he was going to be, but we do get the opportunity. He does unfortunately just get into Brace before we get in, but we can turn and do a return to Commander and the unit just sort of goes into that like Lao star bludgeon mode. I can use my hero to lock on, get the hero kill on him, and then we can just deal with what's left of the palace guards. And the unit pretty convincingly deals with them. Again, we do take a few casualties on the unit. The unit is slowly starting to diminish now, but we're up to what, like 90 kills now? Which isn't too bad considering what this, you know, um, is only a four-star unit. And there we go. Nice. Let's get them back to the supply point and healed up one more time. So, yeah, that's kind of how I've been finding the unit. Really nice at these sort of one-on-one -on -one engagements. You really kind of need to try often and hit that first charge, but if you really screw it up, you've got that second return to commando ability, which, yeah, to me, still acts more like a loud bludgeon than a sort of a, a, an armager return to commander. Anyway, let's get the unit healed up, and then we can go out hunting for a little bit more stuff. They are starting to threaten the B point. So that was kind of my next thought, and I was looking to really see... As I got hit by a stray trebs. Note to self, don't stand next to archers that are often a treb target. Is whether I had got time to get round the back and flank the B point and try and charge in. Looking at this point, I was thinking, oh, I, I probably haven't really got time. But I thought it was worth the risk. We're coming on to final point defence, and... I really wanted to sort of get back to a unit of stalwarts. We managed to get the flank, but unfortunately I get knocked off my horse, and they get a lot of interrupt on my charge. So I have to go on, essentially, with the return to commander without getting the first part of the charge off. And we do continue to get kills. We basically fully wipe the unit of Janissaries, but the Paladins do a good job of locking me down, and they get me killed and get me locked in place. Still, I think it was about 90 unit kills and a couple of hero kills. Shows kind of why these Daggerlanders are actually a really nice unit. Next up, a little bit of Sun City. Classic map for a bit of flanking on the final point. Spawn in with the Dagger Axes. Most of the teams try to push the main point on the main point in the classic direction. Really common sort of flanking move this. Come around the back, there's a back way. Every, all the enemies tend to stack up facing the point. And, well, there's actually only one line of stalwart, so when I say all the enemies, it's just the few of them that happen to be here. But still, we can quite happily flatten what little few stalwarts are there. And you can see, we push through quite nicely, and the unit carries through more than enough to take them through and over the point. So we do it with only sort of one horse lost. Anyway, push through onto this side, try to get a little bit back into position. And you see, we're basically halfway through our charge cooldown already. That's what I mean by this unit is really nice when you get all these charge cooldown doctrines on it, and, you know, combine that with the... Veterancy line makes it a really short cooldown. We can come back out the other side of the Citadel, flank round, start to get ourselves back lined up, and then we can just round this corner and charge back into the blob again. Bam, as a nice tight lob, and then press the bang. Look at that. When we press the return to commander, it was about 20 kills instantly because of that sort of um, 
a AOE attack effect that they have, and that's what makes this unit really, really nice. Anyway, it was an easy 60 kill, sort of coming through the stamps and then charging back through, and it sort of helped us to capture the point. So, yeah, dagger axes, are they worth unlocking? In the current meta, yeah, I would say they kind of are. It will be interesting to see how they perform once we start to get um, tier 5 units back into the game again as well. Obviously, currently we're on their tier 4 lock, so it does kind of favour them because they're obviously top tier. But yeah, honestly, a really nice little cavalry unit. Seems to perform really well. Nice formations, nice charge with a good cooldown, and it's nice to have that secondary return to command ability as well. So yes, would recommend them. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel for lots more Congress-made content. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all on the next one.